What is going on, everybody? Uh, this is Cameron Rhodes with the Guided Trip Fly Fishing Podcast. It is just me today. Ryan McVeigh is uh, not with us. He is actually getting a minor knee surgery um, done right now as we speak. So uh, hopefully he uh, surgery goes well. He has a quick recovery. We can get him back on the pad- podcast, back on the water. And um, yeah, so let's hope everything goes well there. But as of right now, it's just me. So it will be a little bit of a shorter podcast today. We'll go over a couple things though. Um, around here in the Valley, we are in full effect for runoff. Um, rivers are blown out around here. Fishing is tough and it's not going to get any easier for a little while. We're not quite sure when, you know, we're estimating maybe end of June fishing is going to start picking up around here. Everything's going to start clearing up again. But as of right now, the Gunnison river in Gunnison was running about 24, uh, excuse me, 2,400 cubic feet per second, uh, or CFS. It's continuing to rise. Every night it's going up just a little bit. It's off color. It's tough to fish. Obviously, there's some opportunities that'll still exist, and you can definitely get after some, but it's not easy. Um, We had a fishing tournament just over the weekend, and, you know, a lot of boats on the water, a lot of people walk waiting around the valley, and it was tough on everybody. We had to pull a couple tricks out of our sleeves, out of the hat there, and, uh, get after some of these high water fish and it, it was tough. Uh, floating the river was hard. It was moving fast. You know, we had to pick every little seam, every little eddy we possibly could pull out as much as possible and just dredge bottom. Um, you know, it was, it could get expensive at times, you know, losing bugs on the bottom just cause you can't see what's going on, but thank God for two and three X. Um, that's the only way we got through that without spending too much money in flies, but it, it was hard. Um, you know, so I I do have that high water podcast, Heller High Water. I believe that's episode nine. You can go listen to that and try and get some high water techniques and uh, maybe get after some of the surrounding creeks around you or whatever, fishing some high water if you're really itching. Um, Like I said, there's still some opportunities that exist in places, especially around the Gunnison Valley, but Gunnison's pretty high right now. Uh, Same with the East River. It was running about 1,100 CFS this morning. That's pretty high for that river. You know, in my opinion, I wouldn't say it's too fishable right now. It's going to be pretty tough. Um, you know, really the only opportunity for some clear water is is heading up the Taylor and going up Taylor Canyon or up to the catch and release. So I actually got a hold of uh, Patrick Blackdale, who's been on the podcast before. He is the outfitting manager at Willow Fly Anglers, um, located at Three Rivers Resort in Almont, Colorado. We got him on the horn and talked to him just a little bit about uh, the fishing up at the CNR. So right now at the CNR, uh, still about 120 CFS out of the dam. Um, Still pretty low for up there, but they should be bumping up those flows here in the next week or two. That's what I was going to ask. What what are they going to bump those to? Right now, the project the projected release is 250, um, so that'll be a pretty big bump if they do that. Um, the way it works um, with those projected releases is just an average flow, and um, sometimes it's not always accurate. So, um, you know, they give you an idea what it'll be, but if they say 250, they could bump it up to you know 175 or 200 for a week and then go to 250 so it's you know it's just an average it's not an exact figure so but either way it'll be a pretty good bump i think once they do actually raise it up definitely it's been kind of running you know anywhere between 115 and 120 for a while now exactly yep exactly right now you can see a lot of fish on reds up there um a lot of pre-spawn fish you know moving around kind of doing their their uh, pre-spawn behavior and everything but uh you know once they bump those flows up too i'd imagine we'll see even more fish looking to spawn typically kind of triggers more of that activity um but that being said there's a lot of fish up there that are feeding um pre-spawn some post-spawners too and you know, it's it, it's actually really good conditions up there especially once they pump the flows um you'll get more mice and shrimp coming out of the dam usually does really good things for the fishing up there. What kind of techniques are you guys using up there right now? I'd say definitely want to start your day probably with a nymph rig. 
Um, and, you know, mice shrimp on the rig is always a good bet. Um, early in the day, midge patterns, keep them simple. Um, you know, black beauties um, are a good choice this time of year. And then as the day warms up a little bit, you can switch over to your more betas pattern. So like a small unweighted pheasant tail, um, RS2s, things like that. Um, an egg pattern can be pretty deadly this time of year too. So Obviously, we want to try and urge people to stay off the reds and kind of stay out of walking in the river and on top of those yeah. beds. Um, but that's good fishing has been, has been pretty okay up there for the most part, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, these warmer days we will get to, um, midday into the afternoon, you can get some, some dry fly action too. So, um, you'll get a blue wing hatch or midge hatch that can, uh, that can be a lot of fun with just, you know, some smaller drives. So don't, uh, you know, don't just rely on your nymphs. I mean, there's, there's an opportunity to throw some drives too throughout the afternoon. So it's pretty fun right now. Definitely. How's, um, how's the Taylor fishing below the dam? Have you heard any reports or been up there yourself? Yeah. So downstream, um, just in the Canyon, you know, things are starting to wake up still T- typically takes a little longer, um, down there just because it doesn't get quite the amount of sunlight. So you know, it's a cold river through the Canyon there, but right now, um, things are warming up and we're starting to get a lot of those smaller tributaries um, that are really, you know, flowing now, especially with the rain we've had the past few days. So bringing that level up, it's pushing some fish out of their winter holes and into the pockets, into the edges and stuff like that. So things are, things are definitely getting fun in the Canyon. Um, I would say in the Canyon, definitely going to be either streamers or nymphs right now. Um, You know, you could probably do, some dry dropper here and there but your your hatches are going to be pretty minimal in the canyon so focus on nymphs you know if you're downstream of spring creek in the lower five miles um probably want to have some attractor nymphs on there as well um because spring creek's a little bit off color that's what i was going to ask you next how the clarity was looking yeah so bottom five miles um you know it's definitely i would i would i would call it stained so it's not muddy or anything. You know, the tailor, we're kind of lucky. It never really gets like super full on muddy, but right now it's, you know, it's stained for sure. It's a, it's a nice, uh, you know, kind of tea colored here, um, in Almont. So it's perfect, perfect visibility for getting close to those fish, fish in pockets and you don't have to worry as much about them seeing you and be too, you know, too spooked by us. So it's actually pretty cool. You can get up and fish some of those pocket waters know right under your rod tip and stuff so nice man we can't really say much about the east and the gunnison right now they're running pretty (laughs) muddy yeah yeah that's the nice thing about having a tailwater here close by is uh gives you an option to fish when everything else is kind of blown out so especially for some people coming up from denver as well or traveling through you know they can um just jut up the canyon there and hit some of those areas yeah Um, yeah exactly you've got uh got pretty great access now um you know all throughout the canyon so lots of places to to get in there and not a whole heck of a lot of people up there really so there's plenty of water to spread out and um you know enjoy some enjoy some early season fishing definitely man um what's uh what's the weather like in almont today it is looks like it's starting to clear up a little bit but it's been pretty rainy and cloudy most of the day yeah, it's been it's sunny where I'm at now, but I just drove through a bunch of snow and uh, it's kind of all over the place. Yeah, it's uh, definitely getting all the seasons in one day lately. So <laughs> that's the way it goes. <laughs> Sweet man, well that works perfect. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to do a little fishing report. Yeah, absolutely, man, and uh, no, happy to do it and. Perfect, buddy. Well, let's uh, let's catch up. Go fishing sometime. Grab a beer or something. Absolutely, absolutely, man. I'd love to. Sweet, man. Well, I'm hoping to get a day off this weekend. Um, I'd love to go down to the portal. I know it's opening up. Yep. Um, Wednesday. That'd tomorrow. be fun. Even the Arkansas. I got. I mean, go float the Ark or something too. Yeah, I was looking. I'm surprised it's not higher flows over there yet. I know it. It bumped up a little bit this morning, but I I was over there yesterday and it wasn't too bad. Oh yeah, yeah. I was really surprised that it looks like 
just from the gauge, it's still a pretty good level. So that'd be fun, man. Um, when I figure out which day I'll be able to take off, I'll, I'll give you a holler. Yeah, let me know for sure. Perfect, Camel. Good talking with you, man. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, man. All right, see ya. Later. So Patrick and I mentioned just a little bit about bugs, or at least he did. Um, you know, he has a better idea of what's working up there. He just gets up there a little bit more for some trips, and uh, he's located right there in Almont and can get after it. But, um, you know, if I were to head up there, which I don't too much, but I'm going to start here now that everything's blown out. Um, I'm going to be fishing a lot of fluorocarbon, you know, 4 and 5X for the most part, and small bugs, uh, size 18 to 24, depending on uh, what's going on. And um, definitely what I'm seeing out there, but those fish can be spooky up at the CNR. So you have to attack them a little bit differently. Um, you know, with a little bit of stealth to get after some of those guys, but keep at it, you know, um, they are tough, but, and you can spend a whole day up there and only land a couple fish. So keep that in mind too, that it's not the easiest of fishing, but if you do want some clear water opportunities, you can head up there. And like he said as well, you know, if you're going below spring Creek, below that five mile mark, um, or yeah, below that five mile mark. Sorry. Um, you know, try some attractor bugs, try some different things. Uh, worm might be a good option, egg, some stones, uh, different things to get their attention and, and find those fish where it's, uh, it's going to be a little bit harder just with stained water. And if I had to guess, I haven't been up there, but you know, he said it was stained. I would say it's probably just a little off, you know, maybe a little greenish. Um, and, and that can provide some really good opportunities to getting after some of those fish. Um, there are also great opportunities, you know, in different places around Colorado. I was over just on the Arkansas the other day in Salida doing some floating with my buddy and, uh, it was a little cold, a little windy, but fishing was good. You know, um, we threw some streamers, it was cloudy. So streamer action was pretty good. We also threw some hopper droppers, um, didn't see too much for dry fly action. You know, I know the flows are good over there. It was running about 700 this morning. So it is very floatable. It's an awesome flow for that river right now. Uh, I don't need to say too much about it, you know, and give too much away. But uh, fishing can be pretty good over there this time of year. And then, uh, obviously, we're playing on that Mother's Day caddis hatch. Everyone looks forward to that caddis hatch every year. Didn't see too, ma too many caddis moving the other day. But uh, actually, none at all. But doesn't mean it's not going to happen any time now. So be prepared for that. You know, that weather... Uh, permitting you can get out there and get after some of those caddis and get some good dry fly action in i was also uh, i went down into pueblo and fished the arkansas in pueblo and i was pretty blown away by uh by the fishing down there there was uh, never been down there before i had always heard great things and decided to go fish around and i had a tough time you know trying to figure them out for a while i was it was just me you know um, and I struggled for, you know, a couple hours trying to figure these fish out and figure out how they're holding and, and what they're eating. But once I did, it was, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, what worked for me is I just started out, you know, with what I knew, I started as natural as possible. I didn't want to spook these fish too much. Water wasn't too high. It was pretty clear. And, uh, obviously I started with a pheasant tail started there and, you know, didn't see too much action, didn't really have any hits or anything, uh, wasn't hooking into any fish. So I just kept going more and more natural and smaller and smaller with my bugs. And that seemed to help. Once I figured out the depth a little bit and played around with that, then the bugs, you know, fell into place. And I did, like I said, I just kept getting smaller and smaller. And it, it actually worked out really well for me. And bug of the day when I was down there, you know, a week and a half ago, um, was a size 24 olive RS2. And that was, that was the best thing that I found that was working. And man, when it, when it worked, it worked. Um, but those fish were spooky. You know, you might pull a couple fish out of there and then they were done for a while. Um, so that's a great opportunity to go down there. You know, it's not too far. Uh, you can go check that out. It's only a couple hours from Denver and there's really good opportunities to go catch some fish in there. Um, you know, and there's, there's good tailwater all around, um, below Gunnison here, you know, the, uh, pleasure park, it, it can provide some good opportunities. There are a couple of creeks coming in there that might cloud that up though. Uh, Paco Chupac over near, um, oh, I can't even think of what it is right now. Um, but Paco that can provide good opportunities, tailwater fishing as well. I can't believe I can't think of where it is. Um, but 
you know, don't hesitate to do a little bit of traveling and go check out some different water uh, this time of year, you know, and even some higher creeks might be okay as well. Obviously, you know, we're starting to see some lakes open up in the higher country. Uh, Blue Mesa Reservoir is starting to o- open up around the edges, and that can provide some good opportunities to get after some lake fish. Uh, you know, I've gone down to the green before in, in years past and fished the green out of Flaming Gorge um, right there at Dutch John, the A section, B section, and the C section. Um, there, I'm not the best guy to talk to about it, but I've done a couple trips down there, and it, it can be a lot of fun, especially if that weather clears up and it's nice and warm over there. You can see some good hatches, good dry fly action, um, especially some good nymphing action and maybe even some streamers, some hoppers. Um, So keep that in mind coming through this spring season that, you know, just because everything's muddy doesn't mean you can't get after some fish in different places. Uh, Even with that higher water, you know, some of these creeks, when they green up a little bit or maybe just stain up a little bit, they can actually fish really well. Those fish start to get active and get on the feed. Um, Again, I encourage you to listen to that Hell or High Water podcast I did and Check out some high water techniques that can help you through some things. A lot of attractor bugs, a lot of worms, stones, different things. So if you are going to sit down and tie right now, I would crank out some worms. Um, That's the best thing you can do and uh, get prepared for this long spring season. Um, Water is high and it is going to be tough for quite a while around here. For me, I'm going to start doing some spring hiking, get out there, see if I can go find a couple couple antlers laying on the ground um our shed season opens tomorrow and uh get after some of that and then be doing a lot of tying sitting down and doing as much tying as possible um as we continue with this podcast you know don't forget send us your emails send us your questions comments concerns anything like that um we're definitely expecting ryan mcveigh to be back on the podcast and get after it here shortly once he starts feeling a little bit better and we are going to go over a lot of those questions and comments we're getting a lot of them in which is awesome we will respond to these guys um trust me on that we're going to try and we're making notes we're writing everything down that we possibly can and make sure that we can provide a good podcast when uh we're both back on it have some good guests that we're trying to get on um just trying to plan schedules is tough. Um, you know, again, we've said this before, this is not our, uh, our day job. So doing this on the side and trying to make everybody happy is, uh, is what we're trying to do here. But if you do have questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, send them over, uh, the guided trip at gmail.com. You can also find us on Instagram, the guided trip and send over anything you got. Um, we're still taking guesses on high water flows for the Gunnison this year. We're probably expecting to see it around five grand um and hopefully you know to give a little bit of forecast for everybody if you're planning trips out here if you're planning to come out here and fish the gunnison at least um you know i'm thinking end of june is going to be a good time obviously that's when everybody starts to get busy you know school's out everyone wants to vacation so don't hesitate to book and we can always move you around if we need to and and figure out what we need to do but um, it's going to be a good float season. It's going to go long. We'll have a lot of water, hopefully all the way through September, and we'll be getting some good floating in and a lot of good fishing. It's going to be a big bug year. It's going to be a lot of fun, um, getting after it. So, um, like I said, send us your comments, concerns, emails, everything you got, and we'll get back to you. I appreciate everybody for listening. I appreciate, um, all the support we're getting from everybody. And it's been a lot of fun doing this podcast and, We'll be back at it with some more action uh, as soon as we possibly can. And, uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, This is the Guided Trip with Cameron Rhodes.